been busy working all night And I'm telling everybody I'ma get it right They know what I'm living like I've been busy going all out And I'm telling everybody I'ma get it now Everybody gonna bow down, 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 down Well, good morning, everybody Day four Got up a little earlier today, it's 12.30. We restarted two for day two of the one drop. Uh, apparently they're streaming it. I don't know if I'll be on the TV table or not. I prefer not to be because it's a little bit slower. Uh, then you know, you're looking at whole cards and seeing what people had and all that stuff. And I'd rather just play poker. Um, haven't been out in the sun much, getting a little pale. So I figured I'd come out here, soak it in a little bit uh, before the day. Didn't have a great day to close the night. Of course, as I mentioned to you guys in the last vlog with the 100K in for two bullets, um, one of the very last hands of the night, the button went all in for 10 big blinds. And I called in the big blind with 9, 10 suited, raised a couple eyebrows from people like, ooh, that's not, I don't, Daniel doesn't do stuff like that. And I'm like, well, actually, when it's correct, I do. So uh, I did, I lost the pot though, and I have 451,000 to start the day. That's 38 big blinds, that's plenty. I've been in worse shape than that plenty of times. So um, yeah, the plan today, my intention, oh, you know what, I gotta go look at the structure sheet because I, I have not made my intention clear for the day. So next step, after this little drinking of my shake and having breakfast, I'm going to look at the structure and come up with an intention for what I'd like to see happen by the end of the day. Okay, so I realized in, uh, you know yesterday because I was focused on the final table. I wasn't really focused on the one drop and I didn't realize that they skipped two levels and I had my intention off based on, you know, um, the amount of chips. I was just, I said 1.5 million, which was kind of silly. So basically my process is when I journal is I like to just get clear and visualize kind of like how I want to see the day end, what would be a chip stack that I would be very, very excited about. I'm not attached to it, which is really, really important because a lot of people say, well, that's a goal. It's not a goal. I'm not setting a chip count goal. I'm setting an intention in terms of what I'd like to see happen. Um, obviously, just getting to today is fantastic, but I like to look at the structure, where we're gonna end, and then kind of, depending on how late of a stage we're at in the tournaments, just think of a number of big blinds that would uh, put me in very good position. So, because we only played eight levels rather than 10 yesterday, uh, we're gonna finish at level 18, I believe, which is 15, 100,000. So, 15, 100,000, um, wow, how many chips is that? That's, uh, that's a lot of chips. Wow, 50, 100,000. So that would mean, if, you know, to have 100 big blinds, that's 10 million in chips. So I'm gonna have to go from 450,000 to 10 million in those 10 hours. Since I've started a little on the slower side in terms of not really getting off to a great start, we're gonna set our intention for 8 million. So we're gonna set our intention for 8 million. Uh, so in this journal here, I'm gonna write my intention for the day. I'm gonna talk, I'm just gonna sort of like all the kind of stuff I do with the vlog, I'm just gonna blur out any sort of negative things about what didn't work yesterday, what worked. Uh, a couple things that didn't work for sure was just the way that I transitioned from one to the other without being fully prepared to jump into the one drop. Sat down the very first hand kind of sloppily, bluffed off half my stack in a spot where, I, the, the bluff was fine, but I didn't have enough information on the player to make a bluff like that, so, so basically it's a mistake. Just because it's a good bluff theoretically doesn't make it a good bluff if you're not fully aware of what your opponents are gonna do. So now I'm just gonna journal all about that. You know, nothing in like any specific context, just kind of blah. Um, and then, what is it, 12.45? Chill for a little bit and head over to the World Series. Oh. Day two of the $111,000, $111 high roller for one drop here at the 2017 World Series of Poker, where I just got through talking to Kid Poker himself, Mr. Daniel Negreanu, who's at the feature table right now. He told me that he is not going to shave again until he wins a bracelet. So that means if you see him real clean, that means he's winning. If you see him real long, kind of like ZZ Top and those boys, means he's not doing so good, so everybody's got to pull for him to be clean and all shaved up. We almost lost your carry. You just fumbled over. What happened? 
Oh man, I didn't see the little black table there. And I played soccer the other night and kind of cut my knee open. Uh, it just got reopened right now. It's gotta be blood. Let's see. Let's see if we find some blood. Hang on. Oh shit, there's definitely blood. Oh yeah, there's blood. <laughs> we got blood. Four fifteen p.m. We just finished the first two levels, sitting at the tea feature table. Uh, Poker Go is live streaming it, and what's weird is what we've done is like, because it's on a thirty-minute delay, so every player basically has someone at home saying, "This is what he had. This is what he had," and it's kind of annoying and distracting, and takes out something away from the game a little bit for us. So everyone at the table decided that at the end of the hand, everyone's going to show their cards that's in the pot. So that requires, for the way that I play poker, ultra super focused so I'm really really focused on every decision because when when I'm out of a hand specifically so now the difference is like okay usually you get a read on someone but you're not really sure did he bluff did he not or whatever you get to see it immediately right so whatever was freshly imprinted in your mind in terms of what you think you saw you have evidence immediately to either say it's true or not true so let's say I'm looking at a guy and I think okay I think he's bluffing this hand but I'm not really sure typically I might have to wait 30 minutes or till another time or forget but here, I instantly get to confirm either whether my read is correct or incorrect. So in some sense, that gives me a big advantage because um, it's been, that's how I learned how to play poker. I didn't learn how to play poker by studying, um, you know, spreadsheets and, and game trees and software. I learned by looking at people, getting a feel for what people are doing and understanding that way. So, hey, they want to do it, I'm down. Um, but yeah, good start. Start with 450 up to 650. Going to be playing 10 and 20,000. Blinds. I'm playing a little tighter than I would like to, but that's because I'm short on chips. So there's like some five, six suited, six, four suited type hands I just couldn't get in there with. Um, but I'm gonna feed a little more chips. We'll start dancing again. What up, Instagram? Come on in. Check out the ride. We're gonna do like a, a cribs, cribs uh, RV style. This is where I chill on my breaks. We got a fridge full of yummy vegan food. Not a single dead animal in this fridge right now. We got microwave, dishwasher, all kinds of fun, healthy snacks. Of course, we got TV, and then come on back. We're all magic happy. We got our own porta potty in here, our bathroom we don't need to see. And then, of course, you got the bedroom. Bow chicka wow wow, right? So, this is me for the next six weeks at the World Series of Poker. Okie dokie, so we are on a dinner break. I'm so confused, I'm not really, I should know better what the heck's going on. Everyone's talking about how there was no dinner break and we're just playing uh, eight levels again and now all of a sudden there is an hour long dinner break. I'm not even sure that I'm gonna eat anything. Um, mostly like on dinner breaks, I tend to like to just actually use, use it to sleep, which is why I have this awesome setup here. On the, I also have a bedroom, but I don't know. I just prefer like sleeping on the couch. Uh, played what four hours at the TV table on the Poker Go live stream, and I would have told them that it was going to be like relatively boring because I didn't think there was the proper table to have on the feature table. There were so many interesting other ones like Tony G and Leon and whatnot. But um, I also didn't play very many hands because I was on the short stack. So I did get lucky in one specific hand where Corey Aldemir raised next to the button, and I only had three hundred ten thousand blinds at twelve and twenty four thousand. In the big blind, I shoved it with King Jack of Diamonds, which is correct. It's uh, mathematically good. He happened to have Ace Jack. Came Jack 6-4. I'm like, eh, I would have went broke anyway if I called. Turn to Jack. Definitely would have went broke. River King. So we're real live. We got 505,000. The blinds, when we go back, will be 1,530,000. And thankfully for the viewers, if you watch the poker go, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you were bored out of your mind uh, for the first four hours. But they're going to switch the tables out. We're going to go back to a normal table. Um, yeah, I mean, the dynamic is just like I don't have a lot of – it's just not a not a good dynamic at the table if you know what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> we'll just leave it there. So, yeah, plan right now. Take a little nap. Set my alarm 
to get back for 8.25, so I'm gonna set my alarm for about 8.15. And like I said, I'm probably not even gonna eat. I'm just like, I'm eating, I'm just wasting away here, losing weight like crazy, just. Yeah. Okay, we got a little nap in, feel a little refreshed. Um, my first tea of the series. I like to drink tea, I typically do daily. It's nice, N not caffeine, because caffeine makes me like, I already have way too much energy as is. <laughs> so caffeine just next level crazy. Actually, it makes me sick, so. Decaf peppermint tea, nice and warm, because we're moving tables away from the feature table, more uh, tranquilo, chillaxed, and a little bit colder as well, because the lights from the feature table keep you nice and warm. Hey, Dre. Hey, Daniel. How you doing? Oh, I had money for Jason, too, in the trailer. Yes. I, I had it and I just I didn't bring it. I had it in my pocket 15 minutes ago. You'll be okay. That's what everyone says. That's what everybody says. <laughs> I really, I do have the money. I have like the money. The third person that came up yeah. the oh, I forgot it. I forgot it. <laughs> 7 12. All right. All right. So we waited and waited. Whittled on down to about 12 big blinds, just waiting for the right situation. Late position with King Jack. I was like, the best hand I've seen in a long time. I decided to go all in, of course, which is the standard play. Small blind, insta-called, and uh, had the death hand for me, two kings. So that was an uphill climb, Did not, was not able to climb it, so busted that. Uh, that one cost me $222,222 because it's the one drop, which is, you know, tough way to start the series in terms of like cash-wise, because like now, you know, to get even for that, you're gonna have to win a lot of the smaller ones, but uh, I don't really worry about it till the end. I'm looking for the overall World Series Poker Player of the Year award. Frank, I don't care how much money I win. I'm here to win the World Series Poker Player of the Year. So, headed back to the trailer, gonna chill for, you know, just a little bit, and then um, go head over to the $2,500 triple draw mix. Yes, finally, super excited to not have to play No Limit Hold'em. I find the game so boring, especially in comparison to everything else. The reason I play the World Series of Poker is because it offers games outside of Hold'em. So very excited to have that opportunity. Then tomorrow night, you've got the 10K Omaha 8 or better. So lots of good events coming up. We got rid of the whole big crazy week of big buy-ins and now it's time to actually grind the World Series. Okay, had a good little nap there. Uh, and it's about 9.15. I'm planning on going in around 9.45, which would be level seven. Uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna have some Din Din, the first actual sit-down meal I'm gonna have with a wide variety of things. And then I'm also gonna answer the question of what the heck do vegans even eat? It's another installment live video style. I'm gonna show you what a dinner might look like if you didn't eat dead animals. Let's see what we got here. All right, we're gonna go with stuffed peppers. And last but not least, we got here some quinoa, brown rice. Let's go with some teriyaki tofu. Smash cauliflower, yum. Broccoli, yum. Go stuffed pepper, yum. Yeah, that should be the trick. We're just gonna we're we're, we're gonna pass the teriyaki tofu. Follow it up with some soup. I don't know, man. I have not been as hungry during the World Series. All my friends are good, and my family good too. Hello. Hey. How are you doing, Dan? Same old, same old. Same old, same old. Daniel knows them all right down to the jam. Hey, what? I said Daniel knows them out right down to the gym. I know my people. I see them every year. This guy, there's dealers have been dealing here for 20 years. Pretty cool, man. They love it too. A lot of them do. Not everyone does, but you can tell the ones that love it. You know, they just have that energy about it. Spotify, they never thought I'd be blowing up. We've been busy just glowing up. I'm ready to play some poker. Let's do it. Do you still cook on that show? Are you I, that guy? I got fired. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I got food, people food poisoning in. Is that so you're done, huh? Yeah. Now they got you dealing? Yeah. That's brutal. Sorry to hear, man. <laughs> 
Yeah, remember when you said you were going to like focus and pay attention and all this well, kind of stuff? Focusing you're, so what are you focusing on right I'm now? I'm helping Nick. He's in the final table of the Okay, one. so you're actually... So, okay, so I'm you're actually, actually doing Nick. something productive. Okay, so how are you doing, what are you doing for the team right now is what I want to know. Look at all my chips. Okay, cool. Are you going to hang on to them? No, I'm going okay. to help them. So, because you, you did say before, no phones and all that. I'm focused. That's Randy. Has he been playing okay? Yeah. Yeah, you say that if he was playing bad too. All right. It's all good, dude. Okay. Aren't you supposed to be in the one drop? Yeah! <laughs> Back. I haven't played with this guy in a long time. Still, uh, you still have a job or professional poker player now? I still have a job. <laughs> Cannot make a living playing poker. Okay, so. <laughs> okay, so I'm not gonna lie. That was, I just played for an hour of mixed, mixed triple draw. Um, doubled up to 25,000 and I had so much fun. Like, so much more fun than I've had in a week. If you don't play mixed games, like, you just don't understand how much better and how much more fun it is than No Limit Hold'em, especially because of how slow the game has become in terms of how long it takes everyone to play. I'm gonna tell you about one quick Badoogie hand that I played. Remember, we're playing three different games. Badoogie's the one where you need ace, two, three, four offsuit or four low cards offsuit. I uh, ran a little mini bluff where I raised, I, I defended my big blind and I had ace of spades, four of clubs, four of spades, wait, wait, I had aces, no. What the hell did I have? <laughs> I had ace, four, five of spades. <laughs> I can't remember what I had now. And four of clubs. So, hey buddy, how you doing? So I uh, drew two to the ace four, and I threw away the four, five of spades, and the guy drew two behind me. So what's important in this game, you know, you talk about blockers in a lot of different games, having the four and five of spades, those are very important for cards for him to have, for him to make a Badoogie, right? He doesn't have the ace of spades for us. He's probably gonna need one of those cards. So it's a good spot to do what's called snowing. I stood pat with garbage. I got the king jack of hearts, but I stood pat anyway. And uh, I just bet it and he folded. So I'm up to 25,000. Pretty good, started with 12.5. We got two more hours of play. We're already down to 100 players after 200 and something players start. So I'm excited. I got a little bit of boost of energy after um, getting my little nap in. And uh, I honestly feel great. Like. Uh, the whole 100k thing is just whatever who cares move on to the next one new friends playing fun games and that's what we're playing for this 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 table was like this table will dab and he like comes yeah i like have some fun <laughs> so that's what we're playing for we're already down to 90 players because what is that 34 spots all right Okay, so World Series of Poker, day four is in the books, and I'm not gonna lie, that two hours was the most fun of poker I've had so in like a long time. I just love playing mixed games. Even though I busted, I got on a good run, and then three straight hands of Badoogie got boom, boom, boomed. The last one, James Opes, he actually made a big boo-boo. I made an eight in Badoogie, which is a really good hand, eight, seven. And uh, I bet 2,000 on the river. I have only 3,000, 1,000 left, and he says, just the call. He didn't see that I only had a thousand more and had a better eight, eight six. So that busted me out of that one. But like I'm re energized, I feel great. I'm super excited for the actual World Series of Poker to start. I'm over No Limit Hold'em, just completely bored and drained with it. The speed of play and mix is so much fun. If you don't play these things, come down to the World Series of Poker, play some small satellites, get your feet wet. Also, check out the many how to videos that I did on my YouTube channel how to play Omaha, how to play stud, all those types of things. Educate yourself and learn the just complexities and the fun of the game. I'm energized, as I said. Tomorrow is the first real championship event. None of this baloney, no limits of a 10K Omaha 8 or better championship. Starts at 3 p.m. I will be there. Be there or be square. Ready to play hard. Um, kick some butt. Make some lows. Make some highs. Make some blah, whatever. If you want to know more about Omaha 8 or better, as I said, check out the how-to videos, guys. I, I put a little work in them and I'm proud of them. So... Check that out. Um, that's all I got for today, guys, but uh, we'll be back at it again tomorrow. Having fun. See ya.